Okay, today is about improving your scapular rhythm or your scapular movement when you go through abduction or raising your hand over your head. So what I mean by that is, is the way the shoulder blade moves into abduction and winging is part of that, but we're gonna go through the actual movement dysfunction problems with scapula that we see in the clinic. Now I've got a, quite a few patients that have had scapular winging before where the shoulder blade wings out or tilts forward and they've worked on things like scapular pressing and serratus work to improve that, worked on lower traps and they can switch it on but when it comes to pushing overhead or pushing forward they still have a few movement pattern problems. Now I'm going to help you with that and we're going to go through two exercises. One is this exercise on the wall But before we go through those exercises, I want to drill down some anatomy on what's happening with the scapula. So this is not technically to fix scapular winging, but it's part of that because when the scapula wings, we're losing some serratus, we're losing some lower trap. And if that movement pattern is not fixed, you have problems over here, you have problems pushing. So you might be able to fix the winging by getting your serratus going, maybe you're doing some wall presses, maybe you're doing them on the floor and you can scoop your shoulder blade and sit it all nice, but then when you push, it wings out. So, what I mean by the shoulder blade movement pattern, if you look at this shoulder blade here, we're talking about, here's your scapula, right? Here's your humerus, right? So if I draw that on here, when your arm is down, as in when my arm is by my side, my left arm, that's my shoulder blade, and I've got my humerus here, okay? When it's by my side, I want that vertical. Now, people who have winging problems will sit with that shoulder blade sort of forward and down, okay? And what it tends to do is that, instead of that shoulder blade sitting like that, it tends to sort of tilt like that. So you'll see, if you have your shirt off, you'll see a winging problem like that, where that shoulder blade sort of sits off, okay? That means your lower trap here is not working very well. Your serratus, which is going that way, is not working very well and your upper trap is not working very well. So that whole shoulder will look like it's dropped. It's not really dropped, it's actually tilted, which means it goes in this direction here, okay? And so you'll probably see this corner here poke out. Okay, so if you see two shoulder blades, you might see the right one, if, if you've got a good right one, that's sitting flush, this one's sitting off at an angle, and you can see that tip poking out of the skin like that. So. That's the presentation of like how your shoulder blade will probably sit if you've got a bit of a winging scap which leads you to this movement dysfunction. When you raise your arm up in the air, this shoulder blade goes from there, okay, and then moves in rotation that way. So when I get my arm out to here, my shoulder blade has moved outwards, okay, so now it's sitting out from the midline when I've got my arm out there, all right? By the time I get my arm, this bone here, all the way at the top, as in sort of 170, 180 degrees up there, your shoulder blade is sitting right out like that. If I can draw a crude position. And it has to, to be able to do that sort of movement. Now to get the shoulder blade from there to there to there, you need three major muscles. You need your upper traps. So if I draw the shoulder blade again, you need your upper traps coming in here. You need your lower traps, and you need your serratus coming in there. You also need a little bit of rhomboid. We'll talk about that in a minute. But your upper trap, the way it's pulling is that way. So it's sort of pulling up. Your lower trap is pulling down an angle because it's attached that way. So it's rotating that way. Okay, so it's giving me that rotation outwards. And my serratus is helping me rotate up. So the whole thing goes in that direction. Okay, so as my arm goes up to 180 degrees, and my shoulder blade rotates, those are the muscles that are rotating it. So they also work on the rotation down. So when I come from here, down this way, they're controlling that movement. And here's the rub. If these are not strong enough, you won't get enough movement here, and you'll probably get some catching up the top there and causing problems. On the way down, what you might see is this rotates far too quickly. Is that shoulder blade sort of snaps downwards. And that's your lower trap letting go and your serratus letting go due to load and a bit of weakness. Now the rhomboids will help stabilize that and work with the serratus to keep that shoulder blade flat 
on the way up and on one day down. So if they're not working very well, you'll get your winging on the way up and the way down. So not only do you have to work on serrated strength, lower trap strength, upper trap strength, and get that strength up so the muscles can actually do the job, you have to practice the pattern movement. So today's exercises about practicing that pattern of movement to try and improve the strengthening and the activation through range. Because otherwise, if you're just doing this sort of stuff, it doesn't translate into doing this sort of stuff, okay? So, first exercise. What we do, we grab a towel, because you're gonna, you know, to be able to do this at home, you wanna just use a wall, okay? Open door into another room, use a wall. Now, if I'm gonna do my left hand, obviously the wall is gonna be on this side. What I wanna do first is get this towel on the wall so I can slide. The other thing about this is I'm trying to push into the wall. Now, pushing into the wall that way is going to fire up my serratus. So that's where I get my serratus activation because this exercise against the wall is going to work on more serratus than anything. Okay, And it really gives you a chance to help sort out your winging as well. You might have heard of a few things like scooping to try and set your shoulder blade. This way will really help with that. So what we do to start off with, put your arm against the wall and stand pretty close to the wall. Not, you know, not too far away, pretty close to here. So you're not you're through the doorway, but you're nearly there. So at this point here, what I want you to start off, roll your shoulder forward into that really bad sort of winged position. Now, if you push through the wall, as I'm pushing that way through the wall, and I want you to rotate your shoulder back and down and push your hand into the wall. That will give you that flattening here. So instead of going from sort of a rotated position forward, winging, you then push through the door and rotate back. And you should be able to feel, if you put your thumb behind here, you should be able to feel your shoulder blade come back to your thumb. So if that was my shoulder blade tilted forward like that, I have my thumb here, I'm going to push through the wall and bring my shoulder blade like that. Okay, so I'm trying to go from that position to that position. So if I go here again, that position to that position. There's my start position. Now from there, I want to see if I can keep that position there and slowly lower my arm down to that position there, but keep putting a bit of pressure through the wall. Not a huge amount of pressure, but some pressure through the wall to keep my activation up. Okay, so to telling my brain, when I move my arm down and when I move my shoulder blade down, remember the shoulder blade is going to move okay, from about sort of 60 to 90 degrees. It's going to move from about 0 to 60 or 0 to 45, depending on the person. It's going to stay stable. We'll talk about going stable in a minute. But when you're moving from 90 to 60, so from, from here to here, okay, it's allowed to move. All right? So it'll be out a little bit. It'll come down and sort of meet your thumb. And then it's going to stay in one position. Now, pushing through will help with that. Okay? And then from there, from that position, I don't want any more movement of my shoulder blade. So I'm trying to keep the idea of that position and then keep that position by pushing through the wall. If you push through the wall, you'll be able to better chance of stopping that shoulder blade going whoop and going inwards. Because if you're out there and you bring it to here and you've got a weak serratus, you've got a weak lower trap, when you bring your arm down, that shoulder is just going to crash inwards, which is like it may be doing when you're just doing this sort of movement. So pushing through the wall is really going to help with that. You've got to have your thumb around your back to get that feedback and feel, know your anatomy from here. You're putting your thumb on the corner of that shoulder blade. That's what you're feeling, okay? You're trying to not let that shoulder blade crash in and push against your thumb. So the serratus muscle is going to keep it out away from that thumb, okay? So that's your first part of that one. Going from Recap, going from setting to then trying to maintain and going down to stop the crash. Then we've also got to work on, well, can I work on getting the upper trap, lower trap, and your serratus, getting enough outward rotation and abduction to get my shoulder blade up enough so I've got a good quality movement above here so I can do things like shoulder press. All right. So again, start from here, thumb there, go from bad to good sort of scoop position, push into the wall. And then from there, I want my shoulder blade to move away with my hand 
So when my hand is there, my shoulder is a long way away from here. I'm still pushed through the wall. I'm still pushing in that way. And then when I come down, I want to do the same thing. Keep my shoulder blade slowly moving towards my hand. So when I get to 90 degrees, it's nearly here. And then I can feel it touching my thumb. And then from that point, keep it there and don't let it crash any further. It's a lot to think about. But trust me, you'll do the first few ones, maybe the first few weeks, and you'll get it wrong and it won't feel good. But practice makes perfect. You, this is the sort of thing, it's a moving pattern. It's like playing tennis. It's trying to improve your golf shot. These all need practice and practice and practice and repetition and feedback from your hands, feedback from the wall, muscle activation to try and improve layer upon layer upon layer of that moving pattern so it becomes more and more natural. All right, so you're going to come from out of a bad moving pattern into a good moving pattern or the, the previous moving pattern you're in before pain or before injury. And part of that is strengthening. We do all the strengthening work on the floor and the wall. Part of that is also strengthening through range. So with that one, you're trying to think about the shoulder blade, you know, moving away from the midline when you're going up and then coming back to the midline. Remember, the shoulder blade moves, you know, one degree for every two degrees of the arm. So if I'm going from here to here, and I'm going 90 degrees like that, the shoulder blade is going 45 degrees, okay? So the shoulder blade is moving only 45, it's moving half the range. It's like a, a clock with a big hand and a small hand. The big hand's moving faster than the small hand. So your shoulder blade doesn't move 180 degrees like that, all right? It moves less than that, but it still moves in synchro. You can't keep your shoulder blade pulled down and expect your arm to move up your cause impingement. It's got to move and move away. So we have to do things through range. Now I know that's a hard one, but trust me, that is going to really, really help you if you do it enough to improve your movement patterns of shoulder blade rhythm and dysfunction and your winging through range.